the, uh, the paraffin, the TVO, where it would start and then uh, run on the diesel. And the first diesel was the, uh, the Fordson. Uh, and from that moment on, agriculture was to change uh, to where it is today. Um, the first commercially produced tractor, you'll all be familiar with the, uh, the Great Thirty that we're all familiar with, and had the uh, small horsepower of 35 horsepower, whereas the John Deere's and the New Hollands that you see carrying above you today on the roadside, they're in excess of 200 horsepower. So a lot of you will be able to uh, identify them, those of you who are enthusiasts by the colours. The red and white is usually the Massey, leading us round. Some of them are carrying implements. Um, so these are all two wheel drive tractors. Now you can tell the two wheel drive is, of course, the rear wheels produce the power, uh, the front ones are the steering, and uh, totally different to, uh, to what you see on the roads today. Tractors are all about moving large weights. They were developed in order to uh, provide tillage to the land. So it was all about high power ratio uh, and low speed. Hence why you've got the uh, large tyres on the back, or the large wheels. Thank you. 
doing all that day and it will remember to do. So they've changed uh, out of all proportion. But the truck driver does actually in that field because he just sits there and lets the tractor do the work. Whereas uh, these machines, without the drivers, they don't work. today, they're all somewhat smaller. We'll come and take a wander. Super Dexter here actually, it becomes a fire Fordson. I think it's the Fordson N9, the petrol, that's the one to have, isn't it? The Fordson N9 is the one to have, isn't it? The petrol one. You can drop on one of those, you're a wealthy man. But tell us about your vehicle, sir. Oh, you've got a bad voice. Go on. Well, you know how many cars there are. Yes. That's right. So this one has been bought in 2007, and it's fully restored. Uh, and a lovely piece of uh, kit it is too, and it's uh, been supplied by Burroughs Limited, yes. Castle Fourgate, Shrewsbury. So a local vehicle. Uh, a credit to you. Now then, that's, that's, uh... Oh, you've got to put power steering on it as well. Too heavy to steer. Well, if you carry on, you may as well have a modern tractor. This is the joy of fighting with these. Now then, this young lady is going to tell you all about her massive. Tell them why it's special that it's built in France. It's a three-cylinder, isn't it? That's what it is. It's a three-cylinder if it's been made in France. So uh, that's the difference. So they're quite sought after as well. Oh, 
the flywheel and then you operated the fly-by wires or, what, or a threshing machine which was to separate the corn heads from the, from the stem. So this absolutely revolutionised it to the way that we now see tractors travel up and down the field. So this gentleman can tell you a little bit about his, his Massey and how long he's had it. Thank you. 
Live to help you all with the transition from these steamers to these. Originally tractors were made on a beam system, so you had a big chassis. Half the, uh, half the engine went to driving the weight of the vehicle. It was chain driven, so it was the Fordson, uh, Henry Ford again, who decided that this was too heavy, and the tractors as we see today decided that the engine block attached to the rear axle would be strong enough to give the, the, uh, the vehicle the strength that it needed and dispense with a lot of weight. So the forerunners were the big steamers, but it was uh, your Ford man, Henry Ford, who revolutionised tractors. So we come and see what's a bit further down. We've got the grey Fergie. Some of them very nice. Don't know whether anybody's going to come and talk to me about this one on the end again. Another Super Dexter with an implement on and a field marshal. And once again you can see the big flywheel. Is this your vehicle, sir? Would you like to just come and step away and tell us a little bit about it? Because we picked too much of the engine up. Would you like to tell us a little bit about it, please? Yes, it's 1947, uh, Series 2. Uh, all completely scrapped uh, over on the eastern coast. And in four years, my son, McDowell Land Rovers, and I have taken every gun bolt off it, and it's now as good, if not better, than it came off the factory. Um, she's now working today for the show down on the bottom end there with a the traffic box of Thank you very much. And of course, even in those early days, ladies and gentlemen, on this vehicle, you can see that there's a front hitch. Front hitch, very useful for pushing stuff in uh, or being towed out. So obviously things were, uh, were moving on. The, uh, the, the force of Dexter here, you can see, it wouldn't need the twin wheels on for the little uh, fertilizer drill here on the back. But the idea of twin wheels, rotation, so that they could go on to uh, boggy ground and still be able to tell the land. So, uh, if any of you are thinking about the Massey Ferguson, the 165 here, this indicates how the first cabs were made, very often just a steel frame and a, and a front windscreen, and then everything else was done out of canvas. Um, unusually, this, uh, this Ferguson with the centre headlight, um, they did used to develop them to have two headlights, but in those days, they didn't think that we needed lights on tractors. Whereas, of course, now we work through right, right through the night as it's the requirement of modern agriculture. So uh, we thank them all for showing up today. And uh, as if by magic, ladies and gentlemen, the sun has come out. So we'll ask them all to take a tour of the arena again. And uh, we'll see you shortly.
demonstrated it to you in various forms on all the tractors. Thank 
four-wheel drive system. So uh, thanks to agriculture, we now have the four-wheel drive system in our cars. Thank you. 